crushing it, you know, going from 3K to 6K to having 100K months. And, you know, and, and, and when I first, first met Keon challenges sort of action and um immediately Keon just came took off I knew something was different about him so you know I wanted to invite him on the show the thriving money show for a couple of reasons today number one uh, I wanted him to we're going to talk about number one what it takes to be a success at such a young age because Keon 21 uh, when I met him and I think by the time he was 22 he was having 100k months so that's unheard of, right? Um, but also, you know, why? How, how was he able to explain what we do in the insurance space so well um, to get people to truly understand the need to become your own bank and the need to use life insurance to fund your life? And we're going to talk about some of those stories. But first, uh, without further ado, I'm Marvin Mitchell. For those who don't know me, I'm Marvin Mitchell. I am the owner of Wealth Creators Live, as well as Compass Retirement Solutions. I've been a financial advisor for 18, 18 years, have helped not only my own self, my own company make over eight figures, but I've helped several people reach multiple six and seven figures in their own business. And um, and I, Keon is one of, one of those uh, good stories. So Keon, please tell us about yourself. Um, let people know who, who is Keon. Yeah, uh, first off, you know, thank you so much for having me. Um, I, I definitely would not be where I am today without your mentorship, your trainings, your generosity uh, as well. Um, my name is Ken Edwards. I am 23 years old. I grew up in Metro Atlanta. Um, I, I went to college for about a year um, on a ROTC Army scholarship. And um, throughout that time frame, I pretty much, you know, I thought I had it figured out, you know, like we always do at ages 18, 19 years old. Um, but at that time, I, I realized that, OK, I needed to do something different because the route that I was going down pretty much wasn't really getting me to my financial success. Um, so a lot of people, you know, they ask, what do you, what do you want to be when you grow up? Which is, you know, it, it's very common to ask that question at a, young, at, at a young age. But a lot of people didn't ask what type of lifestyle you want to live. So I realized mm -hmm. at that time frame that, OK, what I was actually doing wasn't aligning myself to the lifestyle that I want to do. So that's when I had that shift when I was in college and I started pretty much just studying business. I, you know, like everybody opened up Rich Dad, Poor Dad. And um, I started in sales. Um, I started in sales, grew a really, really massive sales business. Um, had about, we entered, probably we sold about 5,000 to 10,000 of those products um, just within a three to four year time frame. Um, now, once that, you know, time frame pretty much went uh, left, um, there was a, you know, a turn back moment, a switch um, that most people do have. I thought I was going to be in a situation where I was going to do that forever. Um, and I realized very quickly that business can go left um, overnight. And while everybody was looking for the next, you know, big thing, um, my idea was, OK, let me figure out what industry I know for a fact is going to be here in the next 20 to 30 years. Um, and that's what I wanted to do. I didn't care how boring it was. I didn't care. If nobody wanted to do it with me, I wanted to do something that I knew I was a little bit more secure and that I can actually grow over time. So that's where mm -hmm. I got introduced to the insurance industry. And um, I mean, it's, it's, it's definitely been up from there. Yeah, man. So that's cool. So you talked about entering the insurance industry. You you went on this search to find out, um, you know, you had these this criteria that you were looking for in your next venture. So. So what did you examine in the insurance industry that made you realize that this is the place, this is the next place for your journey, for your mm -hmm. career to go? Uh, maturity. Um, that was the biggest thing. Um, it was maturity. And it was also a product that I felt like I didn't feel guilty about selling. Um, mm -hmm. Usually most times I have to do like a lot of convincing, like, hey, listen, this, you know, this juice is going to change your life. You're going to lose weight or or this product, you know, you're going to learn how to make money with insurance. It's like, hey, listen, we're selling contracts. The insurance company is going to agree to this. And this company, you know, as long as you agree to your half. So I right. was a lot more comfortable with being in a space that was a lot more mature. It wasn't in a space where it was like, OK, you got to have this or no. Everybody was just very calm, very cool, very collected. Um, right. It took a lot of information. And I think one thing that actually 
draw me to it is the licensing part. I know, you know, most people, they don't like that, but I did because in other industries, you know, to start a business, all it takes is money. In this industry, it just took, you know, pretty much dedication to go ahead and get a license, mm. which is, which qualifies the type of people that are actually selling the type of product that you're looking for. So you're not just buying from somebody that just started their business yesterday. They right. actually had to go through a time frame of qualifying themselves. Okay. So tell us the real. All right. So in, in, in this business, give us the first um, 30 days. Oof. So the first 30 days of the insurance business um, after the licensing, you know, you're, you are in a space to where everybody is in a sense to where they're doing a little bit different. Um, and I started the whole door knocking route and I realized very quickly, that's not what I wanted to do. <laughs> right. Um, and it, it's nothing wrong with that. You know, I noticed that most people in the industry, they do that, but I realized that, Hey, listen, I understand social media, right? At the time I probably had like 8,000 followers. Um, I wasn't using my followers, which is ridiculous. I didn't, I started with people that I didn't know first and I wasn't making any sales. Um, so it was very difficult mm -hmm. because wow. I, I was actually intimidated. I was embarrassed because I was starting something new and I wanted to go test it out on people that I didn't know before I tested it out on people that I did know. So it was very humiliating, um, not, not being successful in that space. So how did you deal with, you know, the emotional roller coaster, the humiliation? I think that's, that's everyone's fear of starting something new and going on a different journey. You know, looking at that journey now, mm -hmm. it looks great, but you didn't know exactly what you were about to go through in this particular journey. So uh, how do you prepare yourself mentally for the journey and, and how do you transition to something that actually worked? Yeah, so I am very like one thing about the sales um, business that I was in, we were very, very honed in on personal development. Like, I'm just so glad that I didn't start making money first and then try to figure out the personal development route. I mm. realized that you have 90% of whatever you want to do is going to be the spiritual aspect of success. Um, you have to write down your goals constantly and you have to believe in what you're saying. So mm. at the time, I'm in a space to where I honestly, I don't believe it. I don't believe that I'm going to make money in this industry, but I'm constantly writing down what I want to see out of this. Um, and throughout the time frame, I'm talking to myself. Like I became my own best friend. Like I wasn't talking to nobody <laughs> through that time frame. Right. We're talking about Christmas. I miss Chris. I didn't. I didn't see no family members during that time frame. We're talking about New Year's. We're talking about birthdays. Um, I was in a space to where I wanted to believe in what I had going on because if I tell somebody, they're not going to. Nobody. I. No one I knew had life insurance. So, who's going to believe that they can? That it can even. <laughs> they don't even think it's a product that they need so how can right. i convince people around me that this is my new venture if you know it, nobody even knows about it so that's that's yeah. what I, I i'm very 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 serious about what i see what i hear what i talk about um and that that's just what it is throughout that time frame i was going to house it houses doing experiences at houses i was going to the car dealerships i was really really doing a lot of personal development so i can believe that this industry makes money. I saw it for other people, but I really didn't believe it was going to happen for me just yet. Now you were hustling, so you just went went dead in, and yeah, you went you went right in. This was your that was your full time job. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, now, I haven't worked a job. <laughs> so you haven't worked. You've never worked a job. I worked one job when I was like 16, 17. And what was that? That was Home Goods. So I was I was the guy building a furniture and selling the furniture. With no commissions. And this, this guy said he never really worked a job. How long did you work at Home Goods? Two years on weekends. So you just worked on weekends. So you never had a full time job until you were an entrepreneur. Not in my adult life, no. Dang, that's that's crazy. All right. So so now so you're 21, and or maybe I don't know if you were 20 or 21 when you started in this um in the insurance industry. I think what 21. I was 21. Yeah. Okay, so you was 21. Did you did you have any bills? I mean, how did I mean how did you sustain yourself early, early financially when you were trying when you were really figuring it out? Yeah, so I did have bills. I actually um I, I was 
I moved out really early. I had my first condo when I was 19 in the middle of mm. the bucket. So I was one of those people that, you know, you know, you, you make five grand a month, you go get a crib for four grand a month. Um, so I made that mistake very early on. Um, and then when I finally moved again, I, I realized that, okay, but I need six to 12 months of rent saved up. Um, because right. at the time it was very hard. It was COVID and things like that. Um, so yeah, I was, I was still sustaining myself, which was really good. Um, now when that business flopped, oh yeah, it was hustle mode. Um, I was right. everywhere. Um, and I had my experience in door knocking. I had went to Chicago for about a month or two. Horrible experience. I do not suggest door knocking <laughs> in, in Chicago. It, it was a very humbling experience. Um, to just make some money. I didn't make a dime, not one dime uh, doing that. I broke even on everything. And, you know, back home, I didn't know what I was going to do about rent. Um, bills definitely was piling up. And I'm like, I'm 21 at the time. So I couldn't, I had nobody to call um, to like, hey, listen, I need, I need $2,000. I, I couldn't call my parents. I couldn't call my mom and my dad at the time because again, it's very humiliating. You had a full ride scholarship to go to the military. Why would you even sign yourself up for this? And college and Clark, I went to Clark and Lennon University. They already kicked me out. So they kicked me out of school um, because, of course, you know, I lost the scholarship because I wasn't, you know, doing those things that I needed to do. Um, so, yeah, when I was in college, my freshman year, I was making five grand a month. So, mm. so I thought that, oh, I don't even, you know, I was showing up to class, but it was like, okay, I'm showing up to class so I can sell my classmate. Um, right. But it wasn't, right. I'm was showing up to class to learn. Like I had teachers um, that I was teaching, like teachers I was selling my product to. What was the product? Uh, it was, uh, so at that time, this is before COVID, it was trading cor courses. So Forex, when you're talking about Bitcoin, all of that, people didn't know about that. So at that mm -hmm. time, um, making money from your phone was like the biggest thing ever. Um, so a lot of people wanted to know about how am I in a situation to where I can partake in these brokerages online. And it was a way that I decided to take advantage of before people knew about it. By COVID time, people had no choice but to figure it out because at that time, people were just at home. They're just strolling. They don't have the time frame to just, <laughs> they just doing whatever now. So um, during that time frame, yeah, it, it was really good. It was really good because a lot of people didn't know about it. Okay. So that's great. So you, so you in the insurance, you, you, you hit the insurance business and you were already doing well. Uh, I think when we met, you were doing a few thousand a month, somewhere around there. So take me through how, how we met. Um, you know, where did you see me? How did you find me? Why did you decide to uh, participate in some of the training classes? And it just, cause I don't even know this, this is my first time knowing this information. So, okay. Yeah. Know. So, so what happened was um, I had, a, a, this is when, after the door knocking period, right? I went through that phase and I said, okay, I don't want to do this anymore. But right. made me not want to do it anymore. I was complaining to somebody that I knew, somebody that I was, uh, at the time I was renting their car. And at that time, um, I was telling him I was doing it. He was like, oh man, you're doing insurance. So you know about the cash value. I'm like, dude, what are you talking about? I had no idea. He, he told me that he had joined um, a recession proof. Uh, he, he seen your webinar on recession proof. And he was like, man, look up this guy. You know, you need to, you know, get connected to him. And I saw that you followed a few people that I already knew. And I just started, you know, at, it was just so ironic. I believe that same day mm -hmm. you had a training. So at that time, I'm like, OK, but let me let me figure this out, because I had no idea what you're talking about. At the time, I understood. I thought I understood the person that was teaching me about the cash value. I was telling people and I had sent out probably like three thousand messages about cash value. This is how before I met you, I right. thought that you can borrow from the death benefit. Mm. So all of my clients, <laughs> that's what I was being told by the person that pretty much got me in the business, that you can borrow from the death benefit. So I'm telling people, hey, you get a $300,000. Man, you was probably selling so much life insurance. <laughs> I <laughs> and you tell you had to get a $300,000 loan in 30 days. They're like, what? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I was selling a lot of IULs at the time. Um, I had no idea what I was talking about. Like I had, I, at the, I remember uh, one client, multimillionaires. 
and they were just listening to me and they're like right. what is he talking about but it sounds so good it sounded so good um <laughs> but no once i got introduced to you i realized that i literally sh- could have been in jail and sued because <laughs> i'd have an idea what i was talking about oh my god and you know that's one of the things of uh, keon that i had to start letting people know actively you cannot borrow from the death benefit. I'm like, where did y'all get that from? No. Like, people were coming to me, and I had to start putting it in my presentation. So now I know where it came from. It was you that was telling <laughs> everybody that you could borrow from the death benefit. So, all right, that makes sense. So we met. You came to my class. What happens mm-hmm. next? So once I came to the class, um, I got a better understanding. Um, Not necessarily, you know, a, a lot about the cash value, but more about the business. I realized that this is a real business. The people that I was around, it was just a hustle for them. Right. So I realized that there are people out here with real businesses making real living, and they're not in a situation where they're like trying to make this, you know, thing happen for them. Yeah. Um, they're doing it honest. Like some of the things that I was exposed to, I was like, I've never heard of this before. Um, and I remember, you know, we had a conversation. The first thing I said to you was like, How do I book, how do I get clients that are like higher level? Because the clients that I'm attracting and the clients that we're talking to, you know, they're on their deathbed. Um, and, and, you know, no offense to them, but these are not the type of people that I want to talk to and build a six, seven figure, eight figure business. You know, I know it has to be a little bit more than that. Um, so that's where I got introduced to some of the, and I I was on every call and I went VIP by the way. Um, and at that time I know for a fact that was my last, I know that for a fact, I know for a fact that bills was not paid. Like, like, and that is honest. Right. Rent was not paid at the time. I don't know where that that had. I know that was my last. So I, I definitely spent my last on an upgraded ticket um, to, you know, get a training to figure out what what I needed to do. Dang, I didn't know that. So you were so you you did you did your last what? Two ninety seven. Something like yeah. that. Yeah, literally. Yeah. My last. Wow. All right. Cool. So, yeah. And, and, and Keon, you all. Just to let you know, Keon showed up. It's funny. I can I can almost tell the people who got the passion, who got the desire, like almost immediately. Sometimes I'm wrong, but a lot of times I'd be right. And he had it. I mean, he had the it factor. And I, I remember he showed up every day on time, hand raised, being a student, having questions, like really just trying to soak in as much information as he could, like a sponge. And um Bro, you you hit me up and you, and you asked me that question. How do I get higher level clients? And what did I tell you? You say you got to become higher level. Mm, I want you y'all to get that. Level. If you want to attract higher level people, you first have to be higher level. Mm-hmm. People are attracted to who you are. They're attracted to your essence before they do any business with you. And if you're mm-hmm. if you're giving vibes like, I'm just trying to you know, scrape by. If you're trying to do give those type of vibes, those are the type of people you will attract. No offense to the people, but you attract like, right? So you became higher level. Um, you became, I mean, I'm assuming that you already were in a self-development field. So I'm assuming you just said you, you really took your self-development serious. So what happened next in our relationship? How did you end up joining my team? So I ended up joining your team because, um, it was something that you said. I, I ended up seeing you on a flyer um, at an event. And um, yep. I don't I ended up selling some policies or whatever. I did. I still at this time, I didn't pay rent. Right. But I went mm-hmm. to this uh, recession proof event that you were speaking at, um, of course. And definitely from there, you know, we met um, and I pretty much, you know, I literally we just got introduced from there. And um, I didn't know where that relationship was going to go but i right. that was at that time we talking about that was a two thousand dollar that was let me explain this is vegas right on memorial day weekend yeah it, it, that was about two thousand dollars um just to get out there including the room and the flight and the food and things like that um so yeah uh just just to sit in the audience just to learn just to meet just to greet some people um and while the whole time, of course, you know, I'm, I'm figuring it out, you know, of course, um, at the time. So but I was doing really, really good. But I was spending a lot of money on leads at the time. I was spending a lot of money on um, on my business. 
I didn't really care about nothing else but trying to develop the business over time. So, yeah. so, so that's that's that was mainly what I was focused on at that time was developing the relationship, sowing the seed. Um and yeah. Yeah. Yeah, he's very, very you you're always very good at developing relationships. I know one of the things, even even today, you show up. You just show up every time I'm having a gathering at my house. Like, I can I stop by? Absolutely. Or I might call you in now. Now I'm at the point where I just call you and say, Hey, Keon, you might as well go ahead and come through, bro. Because mm -hmm. Keon just he 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 loves being around movers and shakers. And again, when you're around more movers and shakers, you become more of a mover and shaker yourself. Mm. Am I froze my screen? Yeah, you're froze on my end. It's just my charger. So, uh, all right, hold on, y'all. I'll be back soon. Let me. That's crazy. Hold on. Because we get the good part. I don't want to do the rest of this video. So if I refresh what I lose my feeds. All right, cool. Let's All right, are we still live on, on IG, on YouTube? All right, I think we still live. All right, great. How did I freeze again? Okay, what is happening? Hold on, you all. Let me try this one more time. All right, cool. We're good for now. Let's hope it stays that way. All right, let's talk about let's talk about getting to the bag. Let's talk about mm -hmm. uh, what a lot of people came here to see. Uh, the title of this: going from six k to a hundred k in a month. Let's talk about that. Like, what happened so quickly for you, Keon, that allowed you always been an entrepreneur, always being ready to get in the room, but to see the kind of explosion that you had. As such a short time frame, only being 21 is again, that's something that that is always a story I love to tell, man. So, so 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 what happened? Yeah, uh, break down the blueprint. First off, I was scared because I didn't know that people was putting 500 a thousand a month into an insurance policy. I didn't know that was possible. Um so that was a limiting belief that, you know, I remember I called you and was like, what are you talking about? <laughs> you got to think bigger. Right. And um, that that was one thing, because in my mind, I thought that everybody was broke. You know, no, it was just everybody I knew was broke. <laughs> so um, from that standpoint, of course, um, I started to pretty much just more talk. I did not overcomplicate the system at all. Um, right. I think that, that was one thing when people ask me about cash value, I was able to articulate it in a very simple way. Um, I didn't have to do too much. And when people I, I talk to people as if we're talking in a kindergarten or first grade class. And I think that most people that talk in the insurance space or any financial space, period, they're talking to people at this just because they have the money don't mean that they can understand because you took the test. They didn't. Right, so right, I decided right. to, you know, speak in a more um, kindergarten, you know, first grade level. And I decided to not overcomplicate the process, because if I do that, then the person is not going to understand. From mm -hmm. there, I made a decision that every person like I'm a really, really good salesperson because I can get a person to visualize what is going on. I don't have to do mm -hmm. too much. No, you know, I don't really have to do too much for them to believe in the product. If right. they could just look at exactly, okay, how much money do I make first? And how much money am I putting away? Majority of those people, they're already putting away money. So we have a conversation about, okay, you're this is nothing that you're not already doing. So now 
they have extra confidence about doing it because they're like, oh, I've been doing it already. I've been putting it in a 401k. I've been putting it in an IRA. I've been putting it in a mutual fund. Mm -hmm. So once we have that conversation, I can do that. You know, I can do that small conversation. We're not talking about 30 minutes. We're not talking about an hour conversation. We're talking about five to 10 minutes, mm -hmm. five to 10 minutes to paint a picture. And from there, they're excited and, and, and people are ready. And I can have 30 of those conversations in a day. Mm. So when you can do that and you make the process simple for you, you don't get burnt out. And that was another thing that I was running into previously. I was running into burning out. And here's the other thing about becoming higher level. I don't know why, but the clients that are no disrespect, that are a little bit lower level, they are a little bit more complicated. Okay. <laughs> they complicate right. things. But the people that are higher level, they understand it, they get it, they they're like, okay, bet. I love simple. Let's go ahead and let's run the play. They have the initiative to get started. Um, versus someone, you know, you're probably wasting a lot of time. You know, okay, I'm gonna call you back next week, and okay, I'm gonna call you back this week. No, I made people actually want it. We want to get the process started now. If not, I'm telling you right now, things are going to change within the next week or so. So we were very, very adamant in 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 in, in making sure that we consistently have those conversations with people. Gotcha. Not the second time, the first time. So let's paint the picture, man. Um, mm -hmm. You got people who are listening. At least thirty plus people right now on IG. Bunch of people on YouTube. Uh, that are listening right now, they want that three to five minute spill on um, that they, that makes it simple for them. Help 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 somebody on here understand life insurance in three to five minutes. The way the okay. way the way that we talk about it. The way that we talk about. It. Okay, so if I speak to a client and say, hey, um, well, first off, um, in a sense, of course, we are in a situation to where after that we've already pretty much seen you know what we have. So I, I would pretty much go forward and say, hey, listen, um, you know, of course, when you're talking about a cash value policy, of course, you know, you do have that death benefit. But majority of what we're putting towards the policy is not going to go towards the death benefit. We're going to focus mainly on the premiums, what you're putting towards the policy on a consistent basis. Now, a certain percentage of what you're actually putting towards the policy is going to go to something that we call the cost of insurance. Mm -hmm. But majority of what we put towards the policy is going to go towards an account. This account is going to be considered a cash value account. Now, that cash value account can act as a savings account. It can act as an investment account, a retirement account, whatever type of account that you want it to be. Just understand that this is an account that you're funding on a consistent basis that is building up that cash over time. And as that account continues to build cash, eventually, well, what you will want to do is something that we call a policy loan. A policy loan allows you to take the money out of that account and still earn interest. So even though you're putting money in, you're still earning interest on that money. Imagine you taking that money out to go fund whatever income producing activities that you're looking to fund throughout that time frame. Now you're in a situation to where that money will still earn interest, even though that money is not there. And throughout that time frame, of course, you allow that income producing activity to go ahead and pay yourself back, even though you're still earning interest. So that's pretty much, you know, a very simple way on, you know, where I explain. And, and once they say they got it, you know, uh, maybe one or two, you know, questions people pretty much they get it they're like oh i didn't know it was that simple you know it's nothing more than just an account that's earning interest over time okay that you have the ability to not have to pay taxes on the growth to not have to pay taxes on the loans that are coming out and you're in a situation to where you don't have to wait until you're 59 and a half and you have access to your money most people mm. that are in your situation you know, uh, maybe employers and things like that, they don't get the certain advantages that you have if there's right. a rainy. So you have a rainy day fund, you have a retirement fund, you have a savings account all in one. So you have the ability to take advantage a whole lot more than any other vehicle. Now, this isn't, you know, we're not trying to compare it to other vehicles, you know, sound like it's better, but you just have a vehicle to where you can take a little bit more advantages um, for your future. Because most people, you know, they're they're looking at their future as only retirement. But as of right now, we're looking to invest in income producing activities that will make us mm. more money. So so how do I use use life insurance to to get income producing activities? I mean, I heard something about it. You know, I'm, I'm being a client. Mm -hmm. Of course, I know this, but I, I heard something about it. But like, how do I actually get income producing assets using life insurance? Mm -hmm. So uh, let's say, for example, right. Um, 
you know, it, and it's also income producing activities, but it's also counseling out debt. Right. So I'll give you two examples. Um, as of right now, you're probably in a situation to where you don't have, you know, one hundred thousand dollars. Right. But you may have good credit. You might have good history. Um, let's say, for example, you're in a situation to where you say, hey, listen, I want a hundred thousand dollar loan. Okay? Right. You're going to need some collateral. That collateral could be the insurance policy. You can borrow from that insurance policy, have the insurance policy continue to grow interest. But not only is it growing interest, it's counseling out the interest mm. that you're paying back banks. So once you do that, you now take that money. You can go invest it into, you know, a real estate portfolio. Right. Um, something I recently learned is about a REIT. You can go invest it into a, a real estate stock. You can go invest it in, in starting your own Turo, putting that down payment on a Turo. You can go invest it into whatever you would want to go invest it to. But you got to understand that wealth is it's a family. It's not just it's not a single dad. It's not a single mom. <laughs> you want to utilize all of the tools, all of the family together to go ahead and continue to make things happen. So when you utilize this policy to go ahead and grow interest, not only are you in a situation where you're counseling out debt, but eventually you're making money on your money, even though your money isn't even there. So that is one of the most powerful strategies that you can even use, which is called arbitrage, which every person is in a sense that that really knows about money. They're not looking at how to make a million dollars. They're looking at how can they make a million dollars and how can they live off that million dollars for as long as they can. And that's exactly what the policy can, you know, do for you. Gotcha. So, yeah. So what he's talking about you all is you can use these policies to not only accumulate wealth, but you can use these policies to pay off debt a lot quicker. So a lot of people are, are, have bad credit cards, they have bad debt, um, they, they, they're getting paid from their jobs and what they're doing is they're funding 401k, but then they're using all of their money and their paycheck is gone. Instead of using your paycheck to, to pay all your bills first, what if you use most of your check to put into your policy and then borrowed against the policy to then pay off that debt? You did the exact same thing, but you funneled the money through the life insurance first. Mm -hmm. The life insurance will continue to grow as if you never touched it. Tax free, your debt is being gone. So you no longer have to choose between getting out of debt and building wealth. You no longer have to choose from saving from your own retirement and saving for college education. There doesn't have to be an either or. There can now be a both and. Your money can grow tax free while your debt is going down at the same time. So your wealth circle is looking like this. Instead of just using your cash to pay down debt, you're using your life insurance policy, which is growing and you're paying down debt at the same time. You see how big that spread is getting. You can't even see it on the screen anymore. So that's what we want to do. Right. So Keon has figured that out. And Keon has become a voice speaking to individuals now Keon, you're 22 now right or are you 23 yet i'm um, 23 now okay so you're 23 now um are you only talking to people that's 21 22 23 <laughs> um no in a simple simplest answer no i am okay. talking so how, how 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 is that now 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 because i and i have to know this mm -hmm. you you talking to people who 20 you talking to people who 30 you talking to people who 50 and 60. Mm -hmm. so how do you feel like is that a scary thing for you now, being 23, talking to people who are twice your age? No, because the energy that I give off is, number one, I'm the expert, okay? Right. And number two, the energy that I give off is, hey, listen, here's the strategy that we're going to have. Um, like you said, when people talk, like, if you don't really know me, you're not going to know that I'm 23. Right. You're probably going to be like, OK, he just looks a little bit younger. Right. <laughs> um, because the way that I'm going to explain things, I'm going to explain it just as well as someone that is 43 um, is going to explain it. So, no, I'm, I don't get intimidated uh, by that. I, I would. I used to, of course. Um, but no, I don't get intimidated anymore um, by that, uh, by speaking to people, um, because, of course, you know, like you got to show up as your best self. And when you know and I have some people that have come and they ask me a million questions and I answer a million questions. Um, and I give them the answer, not just the answer that they're looking for, but I'm giving them the answer that they need to know. Um, and some people, they don't expect it. They don't expect those right. answers. They expect for me to choke up and it just doesn't happen. And it's never happened. Um, so I give them 
the answers that they're looking for. And you just know your stuff as a as a professional. You just got to know your stuff. You got to know your numbers. You got to know what you're talking about. You got to know. And in reality, everyone asks the same questions, right? You might think you have a different question that I've never heard of before. Right. No, it has the same question. And if it's a question that has nothing to do with what we're talking about, then more than likely, you know, we're going to revert back to what we're talking about. So, um, gotcha. yeah, so two, I've, so I've been two, able to attract those people. So two more things now, because there's a lot of people on here on my YouTube channel that's following that want to be agents and want to learn how they can make six figures plus. Um, how And they're curious, like, how do we help you? What did we, what did me and my team provide to you that help you along the way? Uh, the training, the tools, the simplicity, um, you know, the people, believe it or not, number one, you know, no offense, but the average person um, is not white. I mean, is not black in this industry. Um, it's a someone that is probably that's been in the industry um, for a very long time and they don't understand the idea of number one technology. They don't understand the idea of simplicity. Uh, that's something that you all have taught me. You taught on my level. You know, even though I'm, you know, 22, 20, I understand technology, but you guys understood how to make things a lot more simpler and how to leverage the tools that you already have. A lot of people think that you need this, that, and the third. You guys said, no, you have, like, when I went to other places, they were telling me, I need this, I need this, I need that. This was the only group of people that said, hey, listen, you have everything that you already need. You don't need to spend this money here. You don't need to do this. This is all that you need. Um, so I started utilizing the tools that I already have and mm. you know, the education pretty right. much puts me to right. another level. Um, because when you get the education, sometimes it's watered down by people. Sometimes people don't yep. want you to, you know, uh, grow past them. You know, it wasn't a cap on the actual education piece, um, which is really good because sometimes people are intimidated by themselves, you know, and mm. especially as an agent, because they don't want you to go sell a big policy um because it probably would outshine them so um in this sense you know you guys have really 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 been a blessing in regards to that and the mentorship and and just the presence period you know you get absolutely motivated when you're a part of a team you know i don't try to be the face of everything i'm like hey look you know marvin <laughs> listen right that's what he said and and i don't get I don't get an ego. I don't try to teach everything. I don't I don't do any of that. I utilize other people, which is yourself. I utilize your teachings. And I'm in a situation where, of course, that client, he you listen to that person. He has 17, 18 years of experience. You don't have to listen to me. Um, you don't have to use my my little experience in my faith. So I've been able to leverage you <laughs> more than you even know. <laughs> Way more than I know. But you know what? That's key, man. And, and that's really I look at the people who are most successful who comes through me and they leverage me. You know what I mean? And and and, and for me, I don't have an ego either. I let I leverage my mentors, right? Because I mean, I got people who, you know, a lot of people are afraid to say who their mentor is because they're afraid that people would go to just go to their mentor. Mm -hmm. But it's a reason why the people are talking to you. So like there are people that you're reaching, Keon, that, that I would never be able to really talk to because they'll relate to you a lot more than they'll relate to me. Like there are people like, and I'm not afraid. I'll say, hey, one of my mentors is Myron Golden. That's one of my mentors. I ain't afraid to say it. I'll go to him. I'll learn a lot of things about sales and in the insurance industry. Um, Doug was one of my mentors. Um, mm -hmm. I have several mentors. I'm, I don't know at all, mm -hmm. but I've developed a community. And mm -hmm. if someone knows me from the community, why not leverage it, right? Mm -hmm. So that's 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 a powerful thing because quite frankly, Keon can call on me and I can call on Keon anytime. It, it, it just works that way. So, you know, I find that people sometimes are not humble. And, and and not being humble actually holds people back more than they know. They attempt to think that I want everybody to know that I know it all, and all they're doing is they're holding their own business back. So that's a powerful concept um, to 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 do that and to show up. Hustle, be happy, be humble, be hungry, be motivated, uh, and, and be willing to learn. Not just not just from what I teach you. I we do training, but I'm, I guarantee you that most of the things that Keon has learned, he's learned by being diligent and doing the research and figuring it out, like studying it. 
you know, you go to me about some stuff, but I guarantee you, you online, you watching YouTube videos, you mm -hmm. you listen to other people in the industry, you look at you listen to people outside the industry because nobody has a corner on the education, mm -hmm. uh, which is a beautiful thing. All right, so you got people who are also watching, who are thinking about getting a policy, and mm -hmm. they know they need to get a policy, but they're procrastinating mm -hmm. right now. What would you say to those people? You're missing out on a pool. So one thing I also learned about wealth building is uh, there's a saying that a lot of financial advisors use, you never go against Wall Street, right? You never mm. bet against Wall Street. And the reason why you never bet against Wall Street is because number one, they have the track record. Um, they have multiple billions and trillions of dollars. When you're talking about insurance companies, um, you're talking about companies that run this whole entire world. So why would you not feel safe to put your money in a vehicle that is number one is guaranteed and you're putting your money with trillions of trillions of dollars. So if your couple of dollars can grow with trillions and trillions of dollars, that's 10 times better than your money growing, you know, by yourself in your bank um, in your local bank at that. So you got to look at it from a standpoint of, hey, listen, I want to join who is the winning team. And these companies, they've been winning for the last 200 years. <laughs> so they had these products. It's a proven track record. And if somebody is telling you, hey, listen, this is what they're doing to go ahead and get to that level. Um, I, I think it will be smart for you to go ahead and get started. And, and the thing is, too, for a lot of you all, start from where you are. So don't think that you need $200 million <laughs> to go ahead and right. get this started. Start from where you are. OK. And you continue to produce more. When I got started, I got started with one policy. Now I'm on my fifth. I'm Ooh. pretty sure when, when Marvin got started, he started with one policy and he continues to build from there. So, and that's, that's another thing, you know, you can have more than one policy as well. So you want to start from where you are so you can continue to grow um, because of course your income is going to increase over time, but you got to know what to do with a dollar. It's not what to do with a hundred thousand dollars. It's not what to do with a million dollars. You got to know what to do with a dollar. Mm. That's powerful. So we're about to have um, Keon just leave us with a gem of the day. But before we do that, you all, two things. Number one, make sure you subscribe to this YouTube channel if you watch it from YouTube. If you're not watching from YouTube, go over to YouTube, The Thriving Money Show with Marvin, with Marvin Mitchell, The Thriving Money Show. Subscribe, like, share, comment. That all helps the algorithm. So 100% appreciate that. Um, the second thing uh, that, that I want you to do is, um, you know, if you're looking to start you a policy, you haven't started a policy yet, go to wealthcreationcall.com. That's wealthcreationcall.com. Schedule you a strategy session. It's complimentary, you know, uh, at this period of time. It doesn't cost you a thing. You're going to meet with somebody for 15 minutes and you're going to describe your financial situation. Then they're going to bring you over to uh, one of the advisors on the team could potentially be Keon. So make sure that you do that. Um, that's going to be, that's a powerful thing. If you're interested, if you're in the insurance industry or you're interested in being an agent, uh, just DM me on Instagram, uh, Marvin Mitchell official, add me on Instagram or just DM me and let me know, Hey, I'm ready. I'm interested in being an agent. Um, other than that, you all, Keon, give us a gem of the day. What do you want to leave the people with? It so, can be anything. You don't need to have to be, be anything. Anything. whatever all it right. is. Uh, a lot of my elders um, that I that they would say, sometimes the enemy would magnify things and make them look far bigger than what they really are. Um, mm -hmm. So if you're in a situation to where you're looking at your finances, you're looking at your health, you're looking at, you know, like, am I really on the journey? Uh, whether you're 50 years old, 100 years, it doesn't even matter. You are magnifying things. You're accepting that thing as being magnified bigger than whatever it really is. And you have to understand that, hey, listen, I just need a little bit of faith. I just need a little bit more understanding. And throughout that process, I need a little bit more knowledge so I can go ahead and get started on my path to prosperity. So I love it. And give people your, your Instagram name. Yeah, so my Instagram name is I T S K E Y L O C K. So it's Key Lock. Um, that is my Instagram name on everything Instagram, LinkedIn, uh, YouTube. You just type in my name, Keon Edwards. Um, and yeah, we drop a lot of gems and I and we try to make it very entertaining as well. 
I love it. I love it. So Keon crushed it. Look, this this 23 year old, it was 21, went from 6K to doing consistently 100K. Not in a year. We're talking about in a month. So look, you all, it's possible. This industry is very lucrative. Um, this industry has helped a lot of people, um, hundreds of thousands, billions. But the best part about it is what I love about it is I can do this business and I know that I'm helping people. I know that I'm doing the right thing. It's one thing to be making 50K a month, 100K a month, uh, a million a month. And I feel like I'm not doing people right. Like if people don't get this information from me, they will not be better off than if they would talk to somebody like me or Keon. So that's a beautiful thing to know that you are walking in not just financial freedom, but you're also walking in purpose. And the hardest you're going to work is when you start. Uh, I tell people all the time in this industry, you're going to work a lot harder initially than what you're getting paid for. But then eventually you're going to get paid a whole lot more than you're working. You know, I'm at the stage in my career now where I spent a month, you know, being in Orlando, Tampa, uh, Atlanta, St. Louis, Turks and Caicos, um, Columbia, you know, and guess what? Money was still being made while I was out. And guess what? People were still getting help because you will learn that you can't treat this like a salesperson. You're more than a salesperson. You're a CEO. So you have to go from salesperson to CEO and learn how to build a business and not just build a job. So again, wealthcreationcall.com. Um, we also do a five day challenge. Uh, it's www.scaleyoursuccess.com slash tickets. If you go to www. Actually, if you go to www.wealthcreationclass.com. Um, let's see. www.wealthcreationclass.com. Let me see. Make sure that works. You can sign up for a free webinar. The Wealth Creation Class. Let me make sure that's right. Yep. You go to www.wealthcreationclass.com and you can sign up for a free webinar that I do once a week where we're going to break down this whole insurance thing to you. You can also go to YouTube, watch Keon's interview again, watch several other people's interview that I've done. Follow Keon on Instagram. It's Keylock, I-T-S-K-E-Y-L-O-C-K. Uh, follow me on YouTube, The Thriving Money Show with Marvin Mitchell. With that being said, great show, Keon. Appreciate you coming through, bro. Thank you. Thank Marshall. you. Thank you. And man, go check him out. This young man is a mover and shaker, man. I can't wait to see where he's going to go. The sky's the limit. I can't imagine. He's definitely going to surpass me, and I'll be happy for it. I'll be clapping on that day. So appreciate you, man. You have a blessed day. And this has been a Thriving Money Show. We help you to multiply your money, make more money. We help you to become your own bank, make your money work four to five times off the same dollar and teach you and educate you the things that you need to know about your life, about your retirement, and about making tax-free income. We are signing off. Peace out.